Welcome to Project Jurisprudence Philippines. Article 1, Possible Recitation Questions about the National Territory. First, we should read the text of Article 1. It says, The National Territory comprises the Philippine archipelago with all the islands and waters embraced therein and all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction, consisting of its terrestrial, fluvial, and aerial domains, including its territorial sea, the seabed, the subsoil, the insular shelves, and other submarine areas. The waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago regardless of their breadth and dimensions, form part of the internal waters of the Philippines. The first question that we have in our list of possible questions about Article 1 is, what does the national territory comprise? In other words, ano ba ang nilalaman ng ating teritoryo? The answer is not the whole of Article 1. The answer is, there are two. Ang una ay, the Philippine Archipelago. Pangalawa, all other territories. Second question, what is an archipelago? An archipelago is a body of water studded with islands. In other books, makikita ninyo na dinidefine ang archipelago as an island group or a chain of islands, or a cluster or collection of islands, or a body of water scattered with islands. All these make sense. Pero, the definition used in our law is that an archipelago is an island-studded sea under the law of the sea. Question number three. How do other territories become part of our national territory? Kanina, sinabi natin there are two things comprised in our NT, national territory. Number one, Philippine Archipelago. Second, all other territories. Paano nagiging parte ng ating teritoryo ang other territories? The answer is in Article 1. It says, all other territories over which the Philippines exercises sovereignty or jurisdiction. As long as we exercise sovereignty or jurisdiction over a territory, it is a part of our national territory. Number four, what are insular shelves? Insular shelves, simply defined, is the zone surrounding an island extending from the line of permanent immersion to about 100 fathoms. 100 fathoms is like 183 meters or 600 feet of depth where a marked or rather steep descent toward the great depths occurs. This is a very technical term defined under the law of the sea Nevertheless, this is sometimes asked in law school. The next question is number five. What is the doctrine of regime of islands? Under Article 121 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, an island is a naturally formed area of land surrounded by water which is above water at high tide. And this island emits its own territorial sea, contiguous zone, exclusive economic zone, and continental shelf. However, a land mass which cannot sustain human habitation or economic life of its own has no exclusive economic zone or continental shelf. In other words, even if an island which we own is not a part of the archipelago, 
as long as it is capable of sustaining human habitation or economic life of its own, it has a territorial sea, a contiguous zone, an exclusive economic zone, and a continental shelf. Mamaya, i-coconnect natin yan sa Article 1, first sentence. Question number six, ano ang archipelagic doctrine? The archipelagic doctrine is applicable to island country like the Philippines. We are an archipelago. We are an archipelagic state. Under the archipelagic doctrine, all islands of the archipelago are considered as one unit. A single unit. So that the waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago, irrespective of how deep or how wide these waters are, form part of the internal waters of the state. And such islands and waters are subject to its exclusive sovereignty. Sounds familiar? Yes, that is the second sentence of Article 1, which states, and we read again, The waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago, regardless of their breadth and dimensions, form part of the internal waters of the field. So as a sub-question, pwedeng tanungin na, Does Article 1 adopt the archipelagic doctrine under the UNCLOS? Yes, because of the second sentence, of Article 1. Question number 7. Is Article 1 consistent with the regime of islands doctrine? Remember that under the regime of islands doctrine, an island which is naturally formed, which stays above water even at high tide, emits its own territorial sea, its own contiguous zone, its own EEZ, and its own continental shelf. Medyo tricky tong question na to kasi that is not stated in Article 1. But if you look closely, it says in Article 1, all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction, these territories are part of our territorio. And how do we normally exercise sovereignty or jurisdiction over a particular island basically because we have people there or it is capable of sustaining economic life not always but that's what normally happens when you have a territory these territories over which the Philippines exercises sovereignty or jurisdiction they emit their own TS CZ EEZ and CS. Therefore, we can say by this analysis that Article 1 is consistent with the regime of islands doctrine. Question number 8, what are baselines? Baselines are imaginary lines which we draw around a country in order to measure its TS, CZ, EEZ. Again, the baseline of a country is an imaginary line and its central role is that it is the basis for determining the maritime zones of a particular state. 12 nautical miles from the baseline, we have the territorial sea. 12 nautical miles from the end of the territorial sea. In other words, 24 nautical miles from the baseline, we have the contiguous zone. And 200 nautical miles from the baseline, we have the exclusive economic zone. That is the reason why baselines are very important in the law of the sea. Question number nine. What are two types of baselines? The first type is the normal baseline method. Under the normal baseline method, 
A country draws its baseline by following the curves of its landmass. So, the territorial sea is the low water line along the coast as marked on large scale charts officially recognized by the coastal state. If you go to Google and type in Australia baselines, you can see that the baseline of this country, Australia, follows the shape of the country itself. It's not complicated kasi isang buong landmass lang naman ang Australia. It's not an archipelago. Whereas, in an archipelago, parang basag na salamin yan. Iba-ibang parts. Watak-watak. May tubig sa gitna. It's very difficult to determine the baseline of such states, like the Philippines, using the normal baseline method. Therefore, we use the straight baseline method in which we connect the outermost points of the outermost islands. And after connecting the outermost points of these outermost islands, we form the baseline which is the basis of the computation or measurement of the TS, the CZ, and the EEZ. Question number 10. What is the purpose of baselines? I think na- nasagot na to kanina. The purpose of baselines is that they serve as a basis of measurement in determining the territorial sea, the contiguous zone, and the exclusive economic zone of a state. Question number 11. Is the straight baseline method consistent with the archipelagic doctrine? Yes. This requires a little bit of an analysis, pero hear me out. So, under the archipelagic doctrine, the islands and waters in an archipelago are treated as one unit. That's why all waters around between and connecting the islands of that state, irrespective of their breadth and dimensions, form part of the internal waters of that state. And it is subject, the waters, I mean, are subject to its sovereignty. Imagine ninyo yung mga tubig na nasa gitna ng mga isla ng Pilipinas. Imagine ninyo yung baseline. If you connect the outermost points of the outermost islands of the Philippines, the water within the baseline would be the waters around between and connecting the islands of the archipelago. That's why I said, yes, the straight baseline method is consistent with the archipelagic doctrine as enshrined not only in UNCLOS, but also in the second sentence of Article 1. Question number 12. Does the straight baseline method make us abandon our claims to other islands such as the Kalayaan Group of Islands. This has already been answered by the Supreme Court in Magaliona v. Ermita. In that case, the Supreme Court held that the baseline method is not a mode of determining our national territory. Hindi yan ang basihan ng teritoryo natin. Ang basihan ng teritoryo natin ay yung nasa Article 1, which says that the Philippine National Territory comprises our archipelago and all other territories. Hindi porque labas sa baselines ay hindi na natin teritoryo. So kahit na yung mga isla na kiniklaim natin like the KGI ay nasa labas ng baselines, Atin pa rin yun. Because the primary and probably only function of baselines is to measure the territorial sea, the contiguous zone, and the exclusive economic zone. Question number 13. Malapit na matapos. Why do the Philippine baselines not cover other islands we claim? This is a good question. If you Google Philippine baselines, you will see that 
certain islands that we own and we claim against other countries such as China are outside the baselines. Now, any reasonable person would say, eh bakit hindi na lang natin kasi sakupin ng baseline yung mga yan para tapos na, para wala ng apprehensions and all that. But we must remember that under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the baselines shall not exceed 100 nautical miles. And the baselines, after connecting the outermost points of the outermost islands, should not depart from the natural configuration of the archipelago. Ito yung sagot ng Supreme Court sa Magaliona versus Ermita. Sabi ng Supreme Court, we do not abandon our claims because, number one, baselines are not the basis of our national territory. Number two, we are merely following our treaty obligation under UNCLOS 3. We cannot envelope these islands with our baselines because that would violate the stipulation in the UNCLOS 3 that the baselines shall not exceed 100 nautical miles and shall not depart from the natural configuration of the archipelago. Question number 14, tatlo na lang. What is innocent passage? Innocent passage is defined as a concept in the law of the sea which allows a vessel of a foreign country to go through or pass through the territorial waters of another state. This is defined under Article 19 of UNCLOS. That's very easy. That's why in U.S. versus Sweet and other cases, the Supreme Court held that even if there are illegal items in a vessel passing through the territorial sea of the Philippines, there is no violation of our law. Because technically, that is innocent passage as long as there is no use of the illegal drugs or an attempt to import such illegal items as the case may be. However, in law school, you may encounter a question like this. Can there be innocent passage through our internal waters? In other words, can foreign vessels go through the waters around between and connecting the islands of our archipelago with the same effect as passing through the territorial sea? Or in some instances, without the explicit permission of the state, the archipelagic state? The answer is no. Ayon kay Bernas, dun sa kanyang reviewer ng constitutional law, the term internal waters prohibits innocent passage through these waters. Kaya nga sila internal waters. In fact, even the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea prescribes that there shall be an explicit permission by the coastal state in order to allow any innocent passage through the internal waters. Even the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea recognizes this fact. A sub-question may be asked, which goes this way. What if there is a treaty stipulation in the UNCLOS that says that innocent passage shall be allowed? Would that be valid? The answer is no, according to some authors, because that would violate the Constitution. Other authors would say yes, because that would be auto-limitation. Sa tingin ko, mas mabigat yung first suggested answer. Because it is the Constitution itself that says that these waters around between and connecting the islands of the archipelago are our internal waters. Question number 15. Does the Constitution allow innocent passage? The Constitution does not refer to innocent passage 
anywhere in its texts. But it mentions territorial sea. Under the UN clause, innocent passage is allowed through the territorial sea. There being no explicit prohibition under the Constitution, of course, innocent passage through the territorial sea is allowed. But if innocent passage here in this question refers to the internal waters, then the discussion prior to this applies. Question number 16. Does the UN clause recognize innocent passage? Answer, yes. Under the UN clause, innocent passage is allowed via the territorial waters of another state but subject to certain restrictions. For example, the innocent passage must not be prejudicial to the peace, good order, or security of the coastal state. That's why, for example, the exercise or practice of any weapon, any fishing activity, and so on, are not allowed. Or in other words, the passage in violation of these guidelines and restrictions would not be considered innocent. That's under Article 19 of the UN Clause. These are possible recitation questions regarding Article 1 of the 1987 Constitution. Thank you so much for watching Project Jurisprudence.